In the last lesson, we introduced the idea of MPP, or Massively Parallel Processing. But what is this? Well, in general, what an MPP processing model does is it takes a very large data set and divides that into partitions. Let's say we take a year's data and divide it into 12 partitions, one for every month. And then each of those partitions is distributed to an independent computing node. And those nodes will usually have their own RAM CPUs and storage. So in our month by month example, we might have 12 nodes, 12 servers, each of them processing only one month of data. In this way, no server has to be big enough to store the entire year. It only has to process one month. And then we'll have a control node of some kind. And that control node will marshal all those other nodes and coordinate them. They'll all work on their own piece of an overall query. And the control node will consolidate all the work that all the other nodes are doing and then return that to a client. So from the client's point of view, the database looks like one server. And actually, it's maybe 13 in this example. So SQL MPP is pretty well established. Microsoft has a product called Parallel Data Warehouse, which is based on SQL Server. Teradata has been in this space for many, many years. Netiza for many years as well. Non-SQL MPP also is very well established, but it's really well established in internet properties. So Google, Amazon, Yahoo, etc. typically use non-SQL MPP underlying their systems. That's how they process such vast amounts of information, not by having one huge server or one huge mainframe, but by having highly distributed MPP systems. Let's compare SMP and MPP in a little more of a real-world context. This is an SMP dump truck. So if I wanted to move 400 tons of coal, I could buy this dump truck and it would do it. This obviously is the kind of truck used at very large mining operations. The approximate cost of this dump truck, $5 million. And this dump truck is at capacity. I can't expand this truck at all. If I want to move more, I have to buy another one at $5 million and start to increase my capacity and, and so on and so on, but very expensive. The alternative to my SMP dump truck would be a cluster of dump trucks or an MPP dump truck cluster. This cluster of seven dump trucks are 25 tons each. They can move 175 tons and the seven dump trucks together will cost me about a million dollars. So you can see that if I double that to 14 dump trucks in my cluster, I can move about 350 tons of coal for about $2 million. So I'm still in aggregate, I'm spending less than I would on the very large dump truck. The same basic economics apply to Hadoop clusters. Hadoop clusters are generally harnessing low cost individual servers together to do the work of what might be a very large scale and expensive server. This is a photo of a 63 node Hadoop cluster that was installed at Boise State University. If you look closely, these are just PCs, ones that you might find under a desk. Maybe that's where they got these. But the Hadoop software is marshalling these together and making them work as a coordinated whole. Why would you do this? Probably one reason would be cost. So here we'll just compare a high-end SMP server on the left and a PC-based cluster on the right. The high-end SMP server we can order with 32 cores, but that's going to be maxed out. We can't add another core to that server. If we need another core, we'll have to buy another server. On the PC side, if we priced out in 2012, we could get a PC with a Intel i5. If we order 63 of those, we'll have 252 cores. The high-end SMP server can be configured with a maximum of 16 terabytes of internal storage. Now we could hook up a SAN and so on, but for this example, we're just going to go with how much we can get into the server. That's 16 terabytes. That's maxed out. On the PC-based cluster side, we could put a terabyte drive in each of the 63 machines and have 63 terabytes of storage. So again, we've, we've got some more capacity over here on the right. The SMP server, we can order with a maximum of two terabytes of RAM. We can't add any more than that. On the PC side, we can get order PCs with 32 gigabytes of RAM, and 63 of those would give us two terabytes of RAM, so the same amount. The cost side is quite a bit different. The high-end SMP server configured like this is going to cost us a list of about $157,000. The PC-based cluster is going to cost us about $44,000. So if, and that's an if, we could process the same workload on the cluster that we can on the high-end SMP server, we'll save a lot of money. Another advantage to a Hadoop cluster model is the cost of scale. 
If we wanted to add another 10 nodes to our PC-based Hadoop cluster, we would just have to buy 10 more of these nodes at a cost of about $7,000. Add that, we're just over $50,000 and we've scaled up every element of the system without having to spend the same amount of money yet again. From a systems management point of view though, you might look at the SMP server and say, you know, I really prefer that because I think it's going to be easier to manage that one server compared to a bunch of PCs placed on bread racks. And that might be right. So it is important to point out that you can buy this kind of Hadoop cluster in different packages. One way is what we just looked at where you build your own from a bunch of PCs that you buy from your vendor. Then you have to manage them all kind of independently from a hardware point of view. If you're worried about managing a lot of nodes on a bread rack or in, in a rack and you just want to manage one piece of hardware with one support contract, you can buy pre-integrated appliances such as this one that's sold by EMC. This will probably cost more than building your own system based on off-the-shelf PC class hardware, but it does have turnkey vendor support. A second approach is using cloud-based Hadoop clusters. In this way, you can rent the number of nodes you need only for the time that you need to use it. This can have some significant benefits in terms of hardware depreciation. And it offers a lot more agility to scale up and down your, the size of your Hadoop cluster. And this works pretty well as long as the data that you need to analyze can be moved into the cloud in order to be processed by a Hadoop cluster. 